and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So I'm going to start to light the candles now, and after that we will do our responses. And remember, boys and oh, that's a dog one. <laughs> remember, boys and girls, you never, never, never what? Play with matches. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Advent candle number one. Number two, and number three. And then on Christmas morning, when all four have been lit, we will light number five candle, which is the big central candle, the white candle, which is a symbol of the birth of Christ. So we come to our responses remembering that one of the things that they said about Jesus was I will be or he will be the Prince of Peace. Let your peace come to this troubled world. May we seek to be your instruments of peace. We're going to start to uh, sing to God's praise now. And our first Christmas carol is While Shepherds Watch Their Flocks by Night. I think it's nice you can stand maybe for this one, okay? <laughs> Thank you. 
father and maid. I love to go out shopping and make a great big list of all the gifts I want to buy. I hope no one is missed. It can be quite a challenge to get the gift just right. The slippers could be much too big and the jumper just so tight. But there's a gift I've heard about that can't be bought or sold. So come with me and hear the greatest story ever told. The greatest gift, the greatest gift was sent from God above. He's Jesus Christ, the Saviour King, God's greatest gift of love. Come with me now to Nazareth and we'll meet Mary there. One day, an angel came to her and said, Oh, please don't fear, I've come today to bring you good news. For God has chosen you, so you will have a baby boy, God's rescuer. It's true. Now, Mary had been planning to marry Joseph soon. But when he heard the news, he didn't know what he should do. Then one night he had a dream, the special angel came and said, This child is, is God's only son, and Jesus is his name. The greatest gift, the greatest gift is sent from God. God. He's Jesus Christ, the Saviour King, God's greatest gift of all. They had to go to Bethlehem, for it was set this time. And that's where Joseph's family was. He came to David's land. It took a while to travel there, and there was quite a crowd. They searched and searched, though very tired, no spare room could be found. Then someone said, I have a place for animals to kept. The weary couple went inside, and that is where they slept. And then the end, the time soon came for the special baby's birth. And they laid him in a manger bed. Our God had come to earth. The greatest gift, the greatest gift was sent from God above. He sees the Christ, the Savior King, God's greatest gift of love. Some shepherds working in the field became him quite a fright. When shining angels fill the sky, lighting up the night. Don't be afraid, I'll go in these fields. The promised king has just been born. God rest you. It's true. They told him where to find the child, and off the shepherds ran. They found him and worshipped him that night, all part of God's great plan. The greatest gift, the greatest gift, was sent from God above. He's Jesus Christ, the Saviour King, God's greatest gift of love. Some wise men looking at the stars saw something in the sky, a brand new star not seen before, shining way up high. They knew it was a special star and journeyed on their way. They came to Herod's palace to see what he would say. Go to Bethlehem. They asked about the newborn king and Herod was annoyed. He wasn't giving up his job to a newborn baby boy. King Herod's men found a clue by searching through God's book. The king will come to Bethlehem. Now go and take a look. King Herod said, Find the child and tell me everything. But he was making wicked plans to harm the newborn king. The wise men journeyed on their way and by the star were led. They found the child in Bethlehem, just as the Bible said. They worshipped him and brought their gifts, which sometimes sounds quite odd, 
but they were perfect gifts for him, the rescuing Son of God. For gold to show that he's a king, frankincense for God's own son, then myrrh to show this king would die to rescue everyone. Then in a dream the wise men heard of Herod's wicked plan. So they went home another way to avoid that sneaky man. The greatest gift, the greatest gift was sent from God above. He's Jesus Christ, the Saviour King, God's greatest gift of love. Our God had promised he would send a rescuer to earth. And every year at Christmas time, we celebrate his birth. For Jesus is the Saviour God had promised he would send. He is the one who came to give real life that has no end. So when you're buying presents for friends who come to call, remember that King Jesus is the greatest gift of all. So if you want to catch that again, it's showing the Opera House <laughs> over the Christmas period. Thank you to uh, the League and to the Sunday School. Now, the next carol we're going to sing is Away in a Major. Uh, Grace is going to sing the first verse, and then we're all invited to join in the other verses. So, first of all, Grace, can you come and join me? Now, the uh, members of the Leave and Sunday School are going to present a dramatic reading for us, the story of Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. 
angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with your child and give birth to his son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come, up, come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her older age. She who said to, said to be barren is going is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible of God. Mary answered, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Dylan is going to speak for a moment or two on World Vision. Now, World Vision is an organization that's supported by Believe, uh, so let's just hear what uh, Joy has got to say. Thank you. 
धरै घर परिवार लाई खाना को काम करे साथ ही यहाँ के समुदाय में पोषण संबंधी ज्ञान को कमी था फल स्वरूप हम लोग समुदाय में धरै बाल वाली साथ ही कुपोषित नहीं करेगा धन्यवाद नमस्ते मेरा नाम रमेश है हमें समुदाय में बिलाल के बेटे समझ ना रहे बिलाल के हम से समुदाय में उत्तर के समुदाय धरे ही कम सब जस लेगा ना बार बार के हम तो प्रधान कार्य शिक्षण शिकायत ना असर जरूर है तो सब धन्यवाद gives us a sort of fresh insight into things that perhaps we've never even thought of before. Uh, and uh, do remember that there will be a retiring offering for World Vision uh, as you leave. So if you wish to do so, uh, there is uh, a place at the door and uh, the money that you give will go to some of the projects that uh, were mentioned this morning. It will, will go to that village. village. Sorry? It will go directly to that village to protect. Specifically to that village, which is even better. Uh, and you, you'll know that uh, the gifts that are given uh, will be very much appreciated by all concerned. Um, there was a little story that, that I was given uh, earlier in the week just to uh, uh, prepare for the service today. And we suggested that this little story would be useful uh, as part of our worship today. Last Sunday, you may remember, it was the old, old story that uh, I was talking about. The old, old story going back to the time of Isaiah and the prediction of the coming of the Messiah. This is a sort of an American parable, uh, appropriate for the season of Christmas. And the central character is a man called George, or Old George, as he was known to uh, the folks uh, who lived uh, in that area, in that part of America. Old George owned a, a petrol station, or as the Yanks, sorry, the Americans would say, a gas station. And the scene is a snowy Christmas Eve. And old George is sitting alone in the office. There's not much going on. And suddenly the door opens and a stranger walks in. And this stranger clearly was um, a man of the streets, shall we say, a sort of vagabond, someone living rough. His clothes were, were, were tattered and so on. So he came in really basically just for 
zu Worms, zum Kampfen. So ich sagte das dann, ich sagte George, ich brauche den Feuer, und George war gut, und so that the man probably was hungry, so he got his thermos flask, which was full of uh, nourishing uh, soup, and the, the uh, homeless man enjoyed a warm meal, maybe the first one that he'd had that day. And then there was a ding outside to signify that a car had pulled up uh, in the forecourt, and George went out and he discovered that uh, the car was very decrepit and pretty well on its last legs. And there were two people in the car, a couple, a young man, and a pregnant woman, his wife. And the man was panicking because the car was really on its last legs and had just about got them as far as the uh, filling station and then conked out. And his wife was in labor. And in broken English, Spanish was his, his first language, the, the distraught husband explained. And George says, don't panic, don't worry. I'll get the keys in my old truck uh, and it would take you as far as the hospital. And sure, whenever everything's sorted out and your wife is uh, in the hands of the medics there, or, or later on when the baby's born, it doesn't matter, you can bring the truck back. I don't really use it. And I'll have a look at your car and uh, let's see if we can fix it. And so the couple gratefully drove off to the hospital. George drove the car into the garage, took it around about an hour or so, and discovered that it wasn't that serious a problem. And he'd soon have the, the, the car mended. Maybe not then, uh, at that particular time, maybe he'd wait uh, a day or so, but it would be okay. Went back into the, the garage uh, office, and the stranger, the homeless man, had gone. Oh well, said uh, George, at least he's had a bit of a warm in front of the fire and he's got some nice food inside him. But then, George heard a shot outside. Well, it's an American story, there's bound to be shooting somewhere or other. Uh, and sure enough, there was a shot. And George jumped up, ran outside, had some danger to himself, mind you, because he didn't know what had happened. And he discovered, lying on the ground beside a police car, was a wounded police officer. So um, George dragged him into the um, office where he'd be warm, and being an ex-medic himself in the army, he knew how to, to handle situations like that. So he got towels and he staunched the flow uh, of blood from uh, the man's injuries. But no sooner had that been done there, the door burst open again. And this time, a young man came in, waving a gun around. He looked uh, very disheveled. He looked on his last legs, really. He looked desperate. And he demanded to George, give, give, give me the money in the till. George calmed him down, or tried to calm him down. Look, he said, son, don't worry. I'll get you the money. And as he handed the money to the man, the, the man was shaking, and the gun was shaking. George, with his other hand, very slowly grasped the barrel of the gun. And he said to the, the young fellow, you don't really need to do this. There's been enough nonsense today, enough violence today, give me the gun. And very slowly, maybe reluctantly, the young man relinquished the revolver, his, his grip on the revolver, and George thankfully <coughs> locked it away in a desk drawer uh, in the office. He sat the young man down and he began to to, to listen to that man's story. <clears throat> he lost his job. His home was going to be repossessed. He had no money to 
to buy a present for his wife or his son and was distraught. George tried to comfort him. Just then, there was the sound of uh, sirens outside. An ambulance had arrived. And with it, a couple of police cars and two officers burst in with their guns drawn, looking around to find out uh, what was happening. And uh, the, the officer who had been wounded said, it's okay lads, I'm, I'm okay, I'm here. Uh, and one of the officers came uh, and started to tend the wounded uh, policeman. The other one was looking very suspiciously at the young man who was sitting beside George. Uh, and he said to the, the wounded uh, officer, is he the one? Then something interesting, strange happened. The officer said, well, you know, I didn't really get a good look at the man who shot me. He ran away. And the suspicious policeman said to George, does he work here? Uh, and George says, no, but we were chatting earlier on uh, and I offered him a job. He, he, he came in and, and uh, he was looking for work, so I said, okay, I'm an old man, I'm going to retire soon. Would you work for me? Uh, and so the, the officers then decided that they would take their wounded <coughs> body away. Uh, the, the medics had looked after him. Uh, the medics put him on a stretcher and were carrying him out of the office. And the old man who had been at the centre of it all, who had fired the shot, came over and whispered in the wounded officer's ear, why did you do that for me? And the officer says, don't worry son, it's all right, happy Christmas. And he was uh, carried away then uh, by the, the medics, uh, taken away uh, to hospital. George and the young man were left alone in the office. George went, he rummaged around in another drawer in his desk and he found a box in which was uh, a ring which had been his wife's. His wife Martha had passed away some time earlier. Uh, and he also found little uh, uh, presentation boxes of, uh, of toy cars which various companies had provided. Uh, and what were there on display in the office. He said to the young man, here you are. Here's a ring for your wife as a Christmas present. Here's a couple of cars, toy cars for your son. Christmas present for him. Uh, and so the young man gratefully accepted the gifts and the money which he had tried to steal earlier. Because George says, well, where are you going to find uh, money for, for food, for your Christmas uh, dinner? Keep the money. And so he put his arm around the young man and escorted him out of the office. And they stood in the snow at Christmas Eve saying their goodbyes. When George went back into the office, he was stark to see that the first man who had visited the office that day, the vagrant, the man who had been sleeping rough, was there again. Where did you spring from? says George. I thought you'd gone. Ah, says the young man, the, the vagrant. I've never gone that far away from you. I know all about you. I know about how you lost your wife Martha some time ago. I know why Christmas really didn't mean all that much to you from that time onwards. I knew why you were sitting all alone this Christmas Eve here in your office. Hardly anybody comes this time. Uh, the day, do they? Why weren't you at home? I know all of that. 
But no, he said, I'm going to have to leave you. Because I've got to go home. Tomorrow is a very special day for me and for my family. Because they're having a big birthday celebration for me. Where I am, where I live. Because it's my birthday. And then, in this American parable, this American story, George saw, to his amazement, the, the tattered clothes of the vagrant were changing. And they became white, white robes. And a bright, bright light filled the whole office. And suddenly the penny dropped. Christmas became real for George again. He remembered how those two uh, people who had come, the man and the woman, they had been sent by God. He realized that everything that had happened that day was because of God had sought to teach him the real message of Christmas. It is a parable. It is a story. But every parable has a meaning, has a message. And for us, the meaning that we can take from this parable, this story about that Christmas Eve in an American uh, gas station is this. Christmas is forgiving. Christmas is forgiving. And Christmas is for living. Living for the Master. Christmas had meant nothing to George until God had sent all those people into his life to teach him again that Christmas is for living, for giving, and for giving ourselves to the Master. So as we celebrate Christmas this uh, year, let's remember the story of George and the messages that come from that Christmas American parable. I'm going to have a short time of prayer now uh, and I remind you of uh, the fact that this is the day when we bring our gifts for uh, city missions. Uh, and I know that some of you, many of you have already put your gifts uh, outside. Where are you approaching that right, Maria? Yeah. 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 If you haven't already done so, uh, and you have gifts to, to, to uh, offer up for the use of our uh, city missions, uh, please do so before the end of the service. Um, also in our, our prayers today, we will remember uh, World Vision that we've been uh, hearing about uh, and seeing about. Thank you, Joy, for uh, presenting that today. Uh, could I also say other words of thanks at this point uh, to Believe and the Sunday School for organising the service today, for the leaders. <laughs> For the ladies who cooked that amazing breakfast, you may have noticed that I was quite abstemious. I didn't have any of the goodies. Uh, I don't really like eating much before a service, uh, but you did. You ate. You enjoyed. So, uh, again, a nice round of applause for the ladies. Thank you.
thanks to yourselves for those gifts which will go to uh, Belfast Central Mission, which is the uh, mission that we support here uh, in Priest Hill. Uh, so now let's just have uh, a short while, a short moment or two of prayer, uh, and let's think about the real meaning of Christmas. Christmas is forgiving, and we've been all buying presents, no doubt, for loved ones over these past uh, few days. And we've been buying presents for people that we'll never see. The young folk in uh, Belfast Central Missions books who will receive gifts this Christmas, which otherwise they would not have received. Christmas is also a time for forgiving. Forgive us our trespasses, we say in the Lord's Prayer, as we forgive those who trespass against us. We live in a world, Lord, where there is much sadness, much evil, much inequality. It's not the world that you want it to be. But we are supposed to be your peacemakers, your light givers. Help us this Christmas season, this Advent season, to be aware of that, not just to be aware of it, but also to put into practice the teachings of Christ. Help us to forgive. Help us to encourage. Help us to bring light. Help us to bring peace so that others may know the joy of the Christmas story. We think of the work of World Vision and we thank you for those who are part of that uh, amazing organization. And Lord, we pray your blessing upon the gifts that we will give today in support of that vision, that work. We think of those going through times of trouble today, especially our hearts go out to the island of Jersey. Three fishermen whose lives have been lost. An unknown number of people who have lost their lives because of that explosion and, and fire in the block of France. We think of other tragedies and other people who are going through times of difficulty and stress at this Christmas season. Lord, reach out to them in their sadness, in their despair, and bring to them something of your comfort and your love. Lastly, we think of our own homes, and we spend a quiet moment reflecting on all which lies ahead. Family coming to visit us over the Christmas season, perhaps. Or maybe we have other plans in our diaries. Maybe there's a, a doctor's appointment for someone who is close to us. Maybe there are issues that we have to address within our family life. At the beginning of the service, we talked about Jesus being the Prince of Peace. Come, Lord, into each and every one of those situations and bring your peace. And in these quiet moments, moments of reflection, may we ourselves be filled with your peace. Thank you for coming on such a, a, a quiet
cold, frosty morning. I was sitting bed in the car. Mm, not too sure who turned up today. Well, you all turned up, and you all turned up trumps, especially <laughs> in Sunday school. And believe, thank you again for your part in today. And uh, well, I'm sure I'll see you all before Christmas. In case I don't see you all, uh, and you're you not able to be present with us uh, through the rest of Christmas season, may it be truly a joy-filled and above all a peace-filled Christmas for each and every one. We want to say that our closing uh, act of worship today, joy to the world, the Lord has come. Thank you. 